this year. <gasps> oh my gosh, an Out of This World series is coming to Disney Channel. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Watching Stuff, the show about watching stuff. I'm Nero, and with me is my Canadian counterpart, Y Boy, and we're going to be discussing a uh, latest Disney show called Amphibia, or as I like to call it, Frog Hell, yeah. uh, because because this world is just just horrible. You, you, you don't want to be in this world. And just season one has just concluded, or uh, I believe it was book one or part one that just concluded. No, it's, as far as I can tell from research I've done, season one did conclude uh, July 18th. Uh, premiered back in June, June fourteenth, uh, this year actually. So I mean, they they burned through that first season pretty quickly. Yeah, and, I, and I'll just say, just to get my thought, my summarized thoughts out there right away, it was a pretty enjoyable run. Like, I really enjoyed this season. I did too. Um, I thought it was right because I I really didn't hear anything about this. Like other than like. I knew that Disney was having a frog show and then they have something called the owl house. And those are like the two, uh, the two big ones that they've been reporting that like, those are going to be the new cartoons they're going to have. Cause star versus ended gravity falls ended. Um, all their Marvel cartoons are garbage. So really all they had left after that was nothing. Cause gravity falls ended and star versus finished. Yeah. So now they had to have a whole new run of shows that, basically fill in that void and so we have amphibia here and for those who don't know about amphibia it's about it's about this human girl named Anne who opened a little frog box in the human world so her and her best friends got zapped into uh, amphibia where it's, basically... it's, a, it's a really weird thing because we haven't really gotten much context even though it's the first season where it's like Anne had this ma this you know music box that had like frogs on it and yeah. opened it, and her and her two friends, Sasha and whatever the third one is, because that character <laughs> that character got so screwed this season. We have no idea where she is. We haven't seen that third girl that was part of this team. She's just somewhere no in the idea. background, just screaming, running around. <laughs> She's probably dead. <laughs> it's at a piranha plant or something like that. She right. could be in a frog. Yeah, yeah, who knows? It's got there a lot of like frog people here because it's basically like a camera the frog had basically a world devoted to him. Yeah, it's it's the frog verse. Like so far, it, it seems to be only amphibian creatures, frogs, toads, newts. Um, that's real in terms of like dominant species. Yeah, and then everything else like chickens and such are like just like huge, huge monster sort of thing. Well, but, like like they have herring and herring are like uh, herring feed on frogs and you know actual nature so in this they're like kaiju yeah and just here it just and just a, appears in amphibia and then meets up with the planter family like with the main one being sprig planter this pink little frog that's on the pick right here and he's just being the cute little brother sort of character and so he's the he's he looks like fry <laughs> yeah i'm the one that pointed that out be like he's, he looks like fry <laughs> because... once you once you take his hat off and you see his like a little orange tuft of hair it's like wow that's it, it's fry as a huh. little kid and a frog. <laughs> it's a little frog fry. And it's also, he's also just got the sort of Futurama eyes. <laughs> well, they all kind of do. And it's, by the way, uh, for living in an era where it's, you know, everyone says there's the quote Cal art style, this thing is, like, this art style is nice that it's its own thing. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't believe in the Cal art, art style myself. There could be a lot of similar shows but i don't believe it's just all it's cal art's fault and all these similar shows are well, coming I, I, out I, I think i think the logic is because of the mouths like a lot of the mouths are very similar but like the eyes are so dramatically different from yeah. characters yeah exactly and like like regular show doesn't look like anything else yeah even if you compare show like i remember this one meme going around of just like uh it was gravity falls uh the amazing world of gumball star versus and a few other ones basically like look at all these smiles and all that aren't they exactly the same you're like, well, no. yeah, if you draw all the smiles the same, they're going to be the same. But if you go into the shows, they're all different. Yeah. <laughs> but Amphibia is is really aesthetically its own thing. Even in Frog Hell World, like, this is all a beautiful looking world. <laughs> oh, like, on an artistic level, it's a very, it's a very, first, it's very nicely animated. Um, the backgrounds and scenery, it's genuinely beautiful. Yeah. Uh, even if all the creatures are pretty much hellacious entities that clearly came from the deepest, darkest pit. But 
I think like let's you know let's discuss the cast and you know bring up the fact was it like four four major cast members. Yeah, we have Anne Spring, Hop Pop, and uh, uh, Polly. <laughs> like this is just the Planter family, and where the Planters' basically main goal is like they're going to have to find a way to basically get Anne back home to her world. <laughs> And then there is just mysteries and all that, because this is also big in the same vein as Gravity Falls and such. Yeah, so there's the whole thing of what's, you know, what's the box? What does it mean? We know it teleported Anne and her friends here, but we have no idea. Uh, well, we know that it's called, I think, the, uh, the Chaos Box, the, cal- I think? the Calamity Box. Yeah, so, like, it, it does it does have a name, but we still don't really know the full, uh, full scale of its purpose. Um, yeah. The... Uh, lead patriarch of the family, uh, Hapadiah Planter, or Hop Pop, as they keep calling him. Um, yeah, he yeah. knows he has a Grunkle Stan moment. He knows something, but he ain't telling us. Yeah, so so he has buried the Clarity Box by the end of his first season, and all that, and has lied to the entire family about how much he knows about it. Watch, he's gonna have a twin brother with like an additional like thumb. Is it? Is it a blue? Is it a blue blue frog? Yeah, it's just a blue version of Hop Pop. No, it's. I mean that sucks like really bad. It's like, oh come on, guys. I, I would almost, I would almost find that funny though. Be like, here is Top Pop. <laughs> he's just Hot Pop with a top hand. He's 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 like smarmy and British. <laughs> oh, that would be great. He'll be played by John Oliver. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, we've all the planters as basically in the, in this arc of the story, like they are stuck in their their little town right now because basically around their town. Like, there's glaciers and such basically just holding them into place. So Anne has to wait months and months before she can actually, like, go outside of the town to basically research how to get out of of, of Amphibia. And that just starts the, the the thread line for the whole story as she's finding her two other friends, Sasha and other one. <laughs> yeah, and it also has the thematic of, much like uh, Star Versus, there is a underlining uh, thematic of prejudice. Yeah. Yeah, and um you know i think they were more front well i mean this is only the first season but like in star versus they were really like front loaded yeah at the same time they did start off with just softballs instead of with the first season and such they just went more hardball when it got into the later seasons like he, here the, it's definitely more up front than it was as we have one, like one of our main bad guys being a toad and all that and the, and he he and also sasha here are subjugating the frogs now <laughs> Yeah, like that was a that was a real like um really twisted when you have because the show's episodic, so there isn't a major ongoing narrative. There's there's the basic narrative of um Anne wants to get home yeah. and find her friends. That's really it. But it's more or less interlaced with the idea of uh personal growth, coming of age story, uh familial uh connections, you know, blood isn't uh, it actually even goes beyond just blood. It goes beyond the idea of like species, you know, just because you know, you don't have to be the same species to be be family. Yeah, because that, they always just push in all the episodes. Like, this is the planter family, including Anne as well, being basically the adoptive sort of child of it now. It, yeah, it, and, and, really and, and, and remember, and, and remember, like, Hot Pop cares about her, but also she works as a tax deductible. Yeah, yeah, that's the important part. That was such a funny joke where it's like, that's a deductible, that's a deductible, and you're a deductible. Kill me! <laughs> Like that is just, like that is just probably one of the the most endearing things about this series. Like it is just so just funny. <laughs> like it's very zany. Yeah. It's very it's very much in that same level of humor as, um, a lot of recent cartoons. I would honestly say like it's got that off color, uh, offbeat humor that you would find in Star Versus or Regular Show, or Gravity Falls or, or Craig of the Creek or Amazing World of Gumball as well. <laughs> Gumball, uh, even the new um, new Infinity Train, which uh, if you guys haven't seen it, our video came out on Monday. We discussed Infinity Train, so you know, click the link up in the corner and, and it, or in the description below. You can go check out our video on that. But it's got that same level of off-color humor where it sounds like, honestly, the kind of humor, like people would say this kind of dialogue. It feels more, feels more like run-of-the-mill, sort of like just back-and-forth chattering sort of thing. Which which is really nice because it comes across much much more like natural and realistic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is definitely great because then like Hop Pop is definitely like the king of those sort of jokes. That, jokes, just how he just delivers his lines. Don't stare into the abyss, Anne. It stares back. 
Exactly. And just to talk about Anne re really quick, like Brenda Song, like who who we who most might remember her from her dates just like uh, I, I forget her name, but she was on the Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, just played like She the, was she was a dumb Asian. <laughs> yeah. She was she was the Asian girl who was an idiot. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And now she's playing in like a like a very real sort of kid character. <laughs> like in a lot of these sort of like kid shows, you you would basically write them to be like all the way like I always the learn a lesson all that like like let's say Timmy Turner from from Fairly Odd Parents. Oh. Or, or you go to the opposite extreme where they're just like Mary Sue levels are just basically perfect and all that. Where where wait, we, wait like, is the Mary Sue is the Mary Sue Timmy or is it the annoying yeah, girl? No no. <laughs> Yeah, I guess you would be more, more Mary, Mary Sue. I was trying to think of just another example, but I can't think of one on top of my head. But, but when it comes to, like, Anne and also, like, Tulip from Infinity Train, like, these girls are actually a lot more realistic. They're they're frustrated. They're But when it comes to Anne, she's a lot more self-centered. <laughs> like oh, yeah, well, she, she acts like a typical, how you'd expect a 13-year-old, you know, American teen girl. Obsessed but, with her phone. She, yeah, she, she's very, very typical and also just very tr true to herself. Like, she's not all, all the way just sort of like, I gotta help everybody sort of thing. But she's not all the way like, let me play on my phone, whatever, for everything. Like, she's got, she's got, she's a nice balance of both, which basically helps in having her character arc throughout the first, se the first season. Until, like, where now, where the whole town has respected her and such. And where before, she was seen as, like, this big, lanky monster. <laughs> Yeah, I thought I thought she's been handled very well so far. She's um, especially that last episode is just such a gut punch. I think that like I didn't expect it to play out the way it did. I mean, I, I'm not really too sure what I was expecting it to play. I guess I expected a confrontation with the Toads, but like yeah, yeah, uh, they were really just sort of uh, contextualize this. Like in in the se in the season finale of it, like like Anne and the and Anne and the Planters and the entire town. And the entire town is like visited by the toads, like led by led by the gen general and 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 Lieutenant Sasha, one of Anne's best friends. And as we're able to see much more of the dynamic between Sasha and Anne in the real world, and where Anne seemed to be like m much more like a little bit soft, softer spoken, not totally soft spoken, but she she was sort of like the minion when it came to Sasha, and she's just like the typical blonde blonde popular girl sort of thing. <laughs> And then, and now Anne has to overcome Sasha to basically try to be her own person. Where before she would just do, do anything she asked, which includes stealing the calamity box that blasted them there into Amphibia. Mm-hmm. So you know you have that coming of age story, and it's it's very relatable that like you know we've all had those friends that try to force us into uh, doing things we're not comfortable with. Yeah. And, you know, you start to realize who your friends really are. Yeah. What I definitely sort of liked as well is, like, Sasha had sort of had that moment at the very end being like, being like, she also had that realization where she'll have to start on her own character arc starting with ne next season and such. Oh, yeah, but, I mean, she was totally being a grade-A butt-nose yeah. during oh. this season. Oh, yeah, she she was, but she de she definitely comes across that char character where she is just basically very full of herself, thinks she's the smartest. And, like... She doesn't care about these frogs. She just wants to get back home with her friends. <laughs> like herself. It, it, she's at the top of the pyramid. Her friends in a second and everything else below her. You know, it's... You know, it, it, she, she's trying to, you know... In a way, she's trying to really save herself and an... Other one? Uh, I, know, I know someone's going to correct us. <laughs> tell us I'm telling you, man. Uh, they, they never gave her a name. No, uh, no I'm, I'm sure she... I'm sure, I'm sure Anne said it like during like some of the... The earlier episodes, but Sasha's one that we know more now because we've seen a lot more of her character, and we, we just don't know where the other one is at the moment. We'll probably see her in the next book now. She's probably dead. Yeah, but Sasha will be fine. She she definitely got some boo boos by the end of it, and Anne was definitely emotionally scarred yeah, by that. They, they showed blood. <laughs> that is a, that's wonderful when Disney decides to have teeth again. Hooray! <laughs> like. Like, it's a show that can just be funny, it can have teeth and everything. Do but, you have, um... Because there's such a colorful roster of... Of characters, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a huge roster of characters. Um, and a lot of a lot of great, iconic voice actors uh, return to come and play these characters. Is there... 
Is there anyone in particular that kind of stands out to you? Like, like definitely I f feel Hop Hop or Hop Hop and Ann stand out to me the most. What, what? Well, that's that's main. I'm talking supporting cast. Mm, supporting cast. Mm, I'm yeah, I'm, tr I'm trying to th I'm trying to think like not like the ones that, that there's not really a single one that really, really stands out to me. The only thing that stands out is basically the writing goes in the same direction that Gravity Falls did. Where basically takes these side characters that are usually like unlikable and all that, and actually turns them around to be like, oh wow, you're actually a well-developed character. Or the reverse. Yeah. Now, what do you mean the reverse? You don't you don't remember Willy Wonka Frog, who's like he's fun and quirky, and then it turns out he's like insane. <laughs> no, yeah, oh yeah, that is very true. What? But in that same episode, we have like this very creepy frog and all that, who was supposed to be betrothed to Sprig. But then when you come to this episode, it turns it completely around. <laughs> You're like, oh. I would, I would argue Maddie is my favorite side character. Yeah. <laughs> or, or even Mayor, Mayor Toadstool, because uh, first off, Stephen Root is a phenomenal voice actor who's, who's been around. He's, he's appeared on different shows here and there. Um, Adventure Time. He's uh, Finn Merton's dad, Martin Merton. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure he was on Star Versus. I yeah, yeah I'm sure. I, I, I'm sure most people will remember him from his performance in Gravity Falls as uh, Gideon's dad. Yeah, he was Gideon Gleeful's papa, who uh, who uh, was basically uh, it's really not that different of a character, really. Too, he's just uh, he's just a toad in this version. He's just, he's got the same like Southern kind of voice going on. Yeah, it's just like this one is just much more of a scummy person, where like. Uh, Gideon's dad was just basically more of a pushover. <laughs> oh no, Gideon's dad. I mean, he was using his son to like manipulate the town. Oh boy, yeah. don't make me have to come in. I could buy and sell you, old man. Fair enough. Just leaves. <laughs> yeah, I think that's more Gideon being the manipulative one in that relationship <laughs> than his dad. I think his dad was just riding his coattails. And then and he's got his little. His little servant, played yeah, by uh, Jack Jack McBrayer by Fix It Felix. Yeah, yeah, little Toady. Little Toady. Yeah, some some jokes are some jokes are very on the nose. That's like the Baker's Mister Flower, played by Kevin Michael Richardson, who I adore hearing in anything. Yeah. Like the side characters, like definitely make this this whole show a lot really colorful. Like, there's not really a single one that I basically would, would just point out to be like, that's my favorite side character. Because really, the main cast basically glows so much. Be like, man, these side characters bounce wonderfully off the planters. Oh, out of main characters, I think my favorite's just gotta be Hot Pop. Yeah. Bill Farmer, you know, the voice of Goofy yeah. as uh, Hot Pop. First off, it's it's great to see Disney actors playing other characters. Because I've, I don't know if you've noticed this. It feels like a lot of Disney voice actors, if you're part of like what we'll call the A-list characters, mm -hmm. seems like you mostly stick to only them. Like, Jim Cummings is one of the few exceptions. Right. But, like, I don't think the guy who plays, like, Mickey Mouse plays anybody else in any Disney project. Yeah, yeah, I, I wouldn't know my, myself, honestly. <laughs> I haven't looked into stuff like that. So I'll take your word for it. But um, I, I adore Hop Pop, and I think Bill Farmer's doing a great job. He's got... He really captured that old timey um, father kind of character, yeah. and I think it, it's great. And all of his deliveries are just so funny. Yeah, yeah, and Sprig and Ann are just like great kid char characters and such. They both bounce wonderfully off each other and hop pop and everything. They're good best friend characters. I do want, want to say like the weakest of of the four of them was definitely Polly for me. She feels basically like Stewie Griffin back when he was allowed to be like a super villain before he just became a walking gay joke. No, no, no. <laughs> Say that again, my mom just interrupted. Adorable. Yeah. Uh, I was mentioning that Polly as a character, she's basically Stewie Griffin from yeah. the early years of like Family Guy when he was like a super villain. Yeah. Before they completely like veered left and changed that character entirely. So she. She comes off as like she she makes like dark humor jokes where she's like you know do you need them to be taken care of because I could do that and it's like okay yeah. I, I want to see that character explored a bit more because you only really had one episode yeah where there was um, a little bit more exploration to her and that didn't yeah. really seem like enough well no because this also follows the eleven minute rule so it's a it's a twenty episode season but a, an A story and a B story so what that's forty episodes for one season yeah. And like Anne, 
and in Spree got plenty of episodes. Even Hot Pop got a bunch of episodes that, for his character. Yeah, he had that really good one about the um about running for mayor. Yeah, like that was a great. That's that's, for him. that's where I told you where where like um Mayor Toadstool was just like, hey, just imagine Hot Padilla, a frog as mayor. And I was just like, oh oh wow. Oh, oh, why? Why are you complete racist? Screw you. Wow, that's 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 pretty terrible. Yeah, and then like you know. Before we saw that, like, the, the Toads come in and they collect, like, taxes. But, like, that to me didn't play into a racism thing. That was just like, oh, that's it. They're like the they're like the 1% or something, you know. It's like it's, it's like King John, you know. That was it. Yeah. But the fact that it's like, you know, a frog as mayor. Oh, oh okay. this, is a, <laughs> this is a prejudice thing. Oh, okay. That's all right. You know, we, 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 we use that as a good thematic in Star Versus. And I think, I think Star Versus handled it wonderfully much better than say zootopia which you of course covered in your video and people could click the link for to see that awesome video you did discussing that oh yeah like if you're going to tackle like themes of racism and such you really need to go full force on it and show how uncomfortable it is because that joke is funny because that joke is funny but it's definitely uncomfortable to be like a frog running for mayor <laughs> Yeah, like like very little kids that might fly over their head but the older audiences will just be like oh wow yeah, at least kids will get a connotation to be like, the guy's a jerk. <laughs> so it's starting yeah. to teach them that racism is awful. Yeah, it wasn't just a lesson of just, so yeah, it's bad. Did, uh, did you already believe it was bad? Because it's bad. <laughs> we probably won't convert anybody. Yeah. yeah well, I'm looking forward to like season season two. Like I want to know more about the Calamity Box. I want to see Anne's other friend to see... What what dynamic she played in the trio of friends? Because Sasha was definitely definitely like the leader of the group, and was def definitely the, the slightly more subservient one. To, but then what did the third? What was the third friend to them? And how is she surviving? A cautionary right now? tale. Yeah. <laughs> and she, she was just like, "I'm out of here. I'm free from my stupid friends." Maybe she's just dead. Maybe. That would that would be really dark if they just got to that being like, oh no, your friend's been dead for months. <laughs> I mean, I I I think being a Disney show, it will it will never pull the trigger like that. Yeah, no. Um. So I doubt they'll. I'm sure she's fine. She's probably being raised by newts or something. Maybe maybe she's a wild girl. Maybe she's been out there in the wild wilderness for months and she's become like you know a uh, Jane Tarzan esque kind of character. Yeah, I think that would definitely sure be like an easy way to for it to go. <laughs> And she definitely gave that off that sort of vibe with her, like having her hands or hand in her hoodie pocket and all that. She seemed more like the reserved one out of the trio. Where... Yeah, kind of like the uh, the girl that was in uh, Gravity Falls. She was the you know the one that ended up dating yeah. Robbie. Yeah, yeah, Wendy. No, not Wendy. Wendy's the cool one. The one that dated Robbie. Oh, uh, oh. Uh... Well, Wendy did date Robbie, but I know which one you're talking about. Like sort of the gothish sort of girl that was on her phone all the time. Yeah, yeah, the one that, like, the, the episode with the love god. You know, here, listen to my mixtape. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, I can, I can totally see that character, and I can totally see her, like, definitely livening up the dynamic when she's introduced to the story. What? It's it's a, it's pretty simple in terms of, like, layout to the show, you know? Fun, quirky human girl trapped in a magical world. Well, you know, everyone's yeah. frogs and what have you. Yeah. Um, Episodic you know, episodes, then serialized episodes, but everything feels like it still builds on top of each other. Except for, like, very it's, few episodes that basically just feel like, huh. Uh, this is... It's it's never really boring. There are some episodes where it runs into the issue of, like, oh, this is what happens when you have, like, a 40-episode season. I mean, chances are some of these episodes are going to be like, oh, this character already felt like they went through this arc, so we're, we're just retreading water at this point. Yeah. And I feel that it's fine for character three learn lessons, like if it's like a big character flaw for them sort of thing. But definitely retreading the same ground again and again in the same season gets old really fast. Yeah, because it gets to a point where it's like, how many times does this character have to screw up before it finally sinks? Like Timmy Turner. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, but that's the thing. That show never, there's, there's no narrative real plot to yeah. something like that. There's just... It, wacky adventures with him and his, his stupid fairies. The end, and that's it. There's, there's never going to be any character depth beyond that because they don't want to. They want, they don't want to be anything more. Yeah, and I feel like with, with Disney shows between this and Star Versus and Gravity Falls, we've, we've finally started to see that it, 
you know that that coming back to like back when back in my day when I was watching like Gargoyles or even uh Fillmore. Yeah. When we were having shows where it's like you can have... it's mostly episodic, but there's some depth to it and there's some development going on. Yeah, it's something that's basically more has a lot more substance to it that can bring you back to it multiple times. Like actually, we watch it again and again. Exactly. You know, it's as opposed to like say uh, Teen Titans Go, which is fine. It's just a comedy show. Um, the problem with that though is that the longer a show like that goes on, that it's just a comedy show without a real change to anything, it becomes stagnant. I think honestly, a perfect example is The Simpsons. You know, it's thirty years going. Uh, how many times is Bart going to be a failure and a screw up before he learns? Yeah, it's, well, and it's just it's boring. We've seen we've seen Homer introduced to Marge so many times now. Yeah, it becomes a, a much more boring sort of series to watch, or or these sort of episodic so, shows where they can have serialized elements as well. Sort of like one of those sit, sort of like a serialized sitcom in a sense, where yeah. you can actually build on top of it even with episodic episodes. There's there's canon, but it's. It's not um, really beholden by it. Like, uh, Star Versus in the later seasons became very beholden to its canon because they started developing a lot more stuff by series like 3 and 4. Yeah. But starting off like light like this, you know, it's it's canon light. Like, canon exists, obviously, but it's, yeah. it's not so beholden to it where it's in a situation where you can pretty much watch almost any episode... And you're not really going to lose much. Yeah, even if you watch, like, one of the serialized episodes, so it's, like, on your first try by accident, it definitely, like, already sets up, like, the rules pretty quickly in each one each one of those serialized episodes, so you don't really lose lose track of where everything's going. Unless you hop directly to the ending. <laughs> oh, yeah, but that's... If you're the kind of person that comes in at the end, you're kind of a moron. It, it's like the critics who came out during uh, Infinity War, yeah. and they were like, I don't understand what's happening. Well, did you watch the, like, ten years of movies that led up to this? No, was I supposed to? Well, yeah, that was, like, the lead-up, so... Yeah, that's kind of how they built this movie on. Like, that's for me yeah. personally, I wouldn't watch ten movies to watch another movie. <laughs> oh, a... well, but you don't have to watch all of them to get... And I, I just mean that as, a, as an example, though. It'd be like if you came in and it's like, Boy, Nero, I'm really enjoying this Return of the Jedi. I don't know who anybody is. I don't know who the guy in the black suit is or who the who the weird-looking kid is. But, but... It's a good movie. I like it. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, I, well, I'm going to turn around and tell you, well, did you watch, like, Empire and A New Hope? No? Oh, th th you're at fault. You know, it's like it's like coming into Lord of the Rings and being like, yeah, Return of the King. I don't know any of these characters. Yeah, yeah exactly. So let's let's just get the final rating. For Amphibia season, season one, like, I'm, it's obviously, like, a must-watch. <laughs> oh, it's, I don't even think that's a debate. This, I'm so angry every time I think about Disney Infinity and how they screwed up so hard. Because I would have, I would have loved figurines of the characters yeah, from this. Yeah, I definitely have gotten that Anne and a Hot Pop. Definitely, maybe oh, yeah. Sprig. <laughs> uh, I like Sprig. Yeah. I just I, I like Hot Pop more. I yeah. don't know. I think as you get old, maybe as you get older, kid characters lose a little bit of their endearment. Yeah. Depending on the character, like I still really like Dipper, but I hate Mabel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. As soon as you like understand like the very scope of the whole show, you just realize being like, wait a minute. Did she learn anything during this entire no, season it, run? It's like Jackie Chan Adventures, where it's like, as a kid, yeah, we're like Jay Chan, and then as an adult, oh my god, poor Jackie. <laughs> Has to deal with what that. a what a horrible wretched niece he has. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I I think Amphibia is good. I'm glad it's getting a season two. Um, this is so much better than Ducktales. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, <laughs> it's much better than it. Maybe DuckTales could have taken something from, away from this and been 11-minute episodes and probably would have been better. Yeah, I really think so, because just some of the, those DuckTales episodes are just like, ugh. <laughs> like, maybe we'll, we'll cover, like, DuckTales at a l later time and all that. But <laughs> but definitely for us, this is, like, one of the better Disney shows for us, and DuckTales is not one of them. <laughs> no, not even, not even close. Yeah, just for my quick recommendation, watch Three Caballeros instead. <laughs> like, it's the much better version of DuckTales. It is. It's good DuckTales. Yeah, so there you go. <laughs> so, guys, uh, please let us know what you thought about Amphibia now that it's wrapped up its first season. How do you feel about the characters and the art direction? Do you feel that this is a, a show that you want to see go for maybe three to four seasons? Do you think it'd be cool if they just did a 
uh, Gravity Falls and ended it in two seasons, but, you know, two very solid seasons all the same. You know, let us know what you think in the comments. Be sure to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. If you guys want to support us in any way, you can go to our Patreon. We do, like, we're going to start doing maybe some, like, updating of some sample stuff because we have new a new show uh, coming out in the future where we're going to be doing storytelling shows, you know, stories about our lives and what we've done and, you know, mm-hmm. open up a nice dialogue between us and the community and just yeah. opening up to yep, our, our audience. And it'll be in our, our animation style, so you, you will be getting some, like, cartoons on our channel. Ooh. Kind of. I mean, you know, a lot of it, obviously, uh, we're going to do a shout-out to Gritty Sugar. She is the uh, core artist who helped come up, like, with the main style that we utilize, and it was because of her we've been able to uh, create, like, solid avatars, and then I came in and created my own different, unique style just to stand out on its own yep. uh, for certain storytelling elements. Yep. So we'll be placing a link to her channel in the description below, as we have been placing in, in almost every single every single like video upload we've been doing recently. Like, yeah, we love her art style so much. She's she's a wonderful uh, channel contributor on, on YouTube as a whole. People should really check out her work. Um, be sure, if you also want to support us, you can hit us up through T Public. T Public is an online shop where you can purchase shirts and stickers, you know, original content that we've designed for, uh, for you know, for our, our sort of our brand to help us and, you know, helps keep the lights on at home and stuff like that. And always be sure to subscribe to Twitter because we always make announcements where we're going to come out and maybe do more live streaming. And, you know, we'd like to see you show up and, you know, get in the chat and get involved and you know, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Right. Hmm, is there anything else we, that we should say, Nero? Well, as always, be sure to tune in. To tune green.